Yo, it's Guido coming back at you with a Tactics Talk. Welcome back. We've got the elusive man in his bat chat. Tier 10 French medium tank. He's here on Ruinburg. And he's got a tough nut to crack. Spawned into the north. He sent this video into me, or this replay. Oh, look out there. Sent this replay into me and said, Hey, I had a mediocre game. I'm curious what I could have done better here. And these are always very interesting for me to take a look at. Especially when the player is pretty good, or very good in the case of... The Elusive Man, whose name was Elusive. I couldn't actually get his name. So the question was, what could I have done better? Tough nut to crack with a bat chat on Ruinberg. What is an autoloader like a bat chat good at? Obviously clipping people out. Late game cleanup, assassinations, flanking, that kind of thing. Not easy to do on this map, especially early on. Takes a quick run out into the middle, which I thought that's where he was going to go fight. And then heads on into the middle and actually goes up to the very front where there are a massive amount of big guns. Based on the enemy composition, two mouths that are platooned, a bunch of assault TDs. I think you can really expect to be facing a bunch of those very heavy tanks. And my question then, Elusive, is all right, what's the plan? Right? What's the plan? Initial positioning. I'll talk about it for a minute. We took a run into the middle or north middle part of the field and did some spotting. Looks like maybe they're light up there. You've got a decent amount of tanks. Came around out off of that, back around the back, and then came up to the front lines. And my question then is, what's the plan? A bat check can be effective up here. I like this. I do this myself with mediums. If you can get a position where you can isolate a heavy or you can pop out when he's tracked, hang out behind the 1103 and the 277, pop out and assassinate somebody. This tank does excel at that. However, there's too many guns in the game right now. And this fighting space, this little battle area here, has too many crossfire opportunities and too many ways for the enemy to pull back and get away from you and another guy to pop out and hit you again. You have zero armor. I just didn't like the positioning. I was okay with the sweep through the north, Pulling out, I was a little unsure about, and hanging out here with these guys at this point in the game doesn't really seem like the best idea. I like taking this initial spot here where the 110 4 took because that allows you to work along this edge, use this rubble here to pop out and take shots while these guys keep them busy, and even shoot them if they try to come around this corner and start shooting your guys filtering into the middle. So what could you have done better? Maybe initial positioning, and you're going to eat a shot. I was really unsure why you were driving in the middle of the road right there. You had to know, had to know there was going to be a lot of big tanks. Now, with this Panzer dude doing this, and of course you guys get hit by artillery, that's why this spot's so much fun, because he's busy shooting them. You pop out with a really nice view on this dude, and you get shots into him, and there's going to be more over there. So we take a hit, and now we're kind of tucked up with these guys, but this is very dangerous this position right here, especially when there's a lot of tanks still left alive, because you're going to have things like people driving around the corner, like that bat chat, taking shots at you. Fortunately, he's trying to shoot the 1104. That's a bummer. We don't quite get into that guy. And we're down to four shells. Their team is pretty passive. They've got two of the best tanks for pushing around the corner and flapping people in the face, but you do have a 110 E3 and a 110 E4, and really at tier 10, everything hits so hard, and reloads so fast, pushing, just driving around mindlessly with a mouse is not a great idea, so you bail out of there, and I think this was the right decision. I probably would have forced a reload earlier than you did. The other thing I do is, I will be looking backwards while I drive. I can't, there we go, zoom out a little more. Once you came around this corner, you had a pretty good likelihood of not being shot, but I want to see what those guys are doing. Maybe they give me an opportunity. I'm not saying there was one there, so I would have forced you to reload earlier. You may have been thinking potentially about swinging back and helping if you wanted to. So pretty quickly, there we go. You're going to hit C and force a reload. But we're talking about things you could do better. I don't know. If the intent was just to get out of there, you might have reloaded on the way, and you'd been reloaded a little faster. As it is, I don't think it matters too much. All right, so now we come around this corner. Had you gone into the middle right here, I don't think you would have necessarily had any extra shots. You'd have been hanging out with the Badger and this guy. But you could have supported the guys up, up to the east if they'd had problems. And I think you wouldn't have been driving around in the middle of the road and taking a, a blap from the Panzer Seven. So you would have saved at least those hit points right there. So now we're going to swing back around here. And I thought, all right, good. He's going to go help the guys up north and take out this K91. 
They've lost quite a few tanks. It's five to zero. I think what's potential in your mind now is I'm going to go around and flank the mouths and the rest of them that are stacked up, and you can shoot down that road. Problem there is there's still two big artillery, and there's at least two, maybe one TD missing. You can see the object, last known position. I think there's one more hiding back there, or you don't know where it is. So we count noses. I see three, four, five tanks, six, seven. So there may be a tank or two missing. So we hang out there for a little bit. And it looks like we're really intent on heading back and shooting these guys. And this is where finally the bat chat's capabilities come into play. And I wonder, do you have a... Sh yeah, I probably would have killed him first. Just get rid of him. The other thing about him is he's spotting. Now these guys can clearly see you as well. So we shoot the mouths. I like this selection here. You decide to go after the one shot, one twenty four. You take him down. The bat chat pops out. He's a one shot. You take him down, and then unfortunately we bounce off of the mouse. Pull back around the building so the two sixty one can't hit us. And maybe that was a better idea. I mean, it would have taken you two shots to get the silly two six one down, and he was not really a huge threat. But probably better to get rid of the bat chat and the one twenty four. Look at this. The mouse is staring at you and your buddy here. He's getting pushed from all sides, but he's going to stare at you too. You see that quite a bit. People going after the softer armored tank. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's funny that those... You can push a recently dead tank, but if a dead tank is on the board before you get there, by golly, you can't push that tank. <laughs> and the Badger, we don't get any more hits. So 686 damage, we get two kills. You asked what could I have done better? It wasn't a terrible game, obviously you guys won. I just didn't like the initial positioning and then the driving around in the middle. While I appreciate pushing up and getting aggressive at the front, this really isn't a great map for it for a medium. Not in, not in an all tier 10 battle like this with a bat chat. You just weren't going to have any real opportunities to jump out and assassinate anyone unless for some reason only one or two tanks from the enemy went there and the rest of them went up into the little village but looking at the layout of the teams I just would not expect that and pretty quickly it was proven that all those guys were there so I think your biggest mistake was kind of driving around in the open there um, and from there that the enemy team did kind of dissolve pretty quickly so I really don't know if you'd have been able to get a whole bunch more hit points based on doing what I, I said you should do there as far as jumping into the middle but if I think if you'd have moved up into the little village if you'd have gone to that middle road moved up into the, that little village over on the east, and then come through around behind them, there may have been some more shot opportunities in there to use a bat chat more effectively than going into the town. That, that's my two cents. It's not a, it wasn't a horrendous game. And I think what everyone can pull from this, everyone who's watching this video, is that if something's not working, move and do something else. That's what a good player is going to do. That's what you just saw the elusive man do. And it may have been he went at the beginning, because there's a lot of reasons. He may have went, eh, let's go, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go down into the city. Maybe that's not what he does all the time. Maybe he's always up in the little village doing it, and he just wanted to play something different. But when he got there, you could see him thinking and moving around and going, and eventually he came out of there and went, you know what, this is not really where I need to be. Let me get or try to get around behind him, help the guys out in the field to, to deal with the east side of the map, and maybe I can get behind those guys and use the bat chat to his strengths. Thanks for tuning in. appreciate it. We will see you.